Today, folks, I want to break down for you my fears of the macro and long-term environment in a shift that is happening unlike any of us have ever witnessed. Investing in the short term right now is going to be just as hard as looking out for the next 20 or 30 years thanks to the evolution in AI. And I'm going to break down some of these fears, and we're seeing it in these mega investors like Berkshire Hathaway's Warren Buffett. But let's start winding back. First, let's start with the macro before we take a look at the long term here, because obviously we're starting to see who has real pricing power in this market environment because clearly it's not companies like Tesla, right? We're seeing it with companies more or less like Coca-Cola, companies that, you know, can really raise their prices and don't see as much of an infliction on user experience and recessions. So, I mean, Coca-Cola is pushing towards its all-time highs. They just posted their, you know, earnings beat fueled by price hikes and higher demand. Uh, and just scrolling down, we can kind of just take a look that, you know, the revenue is 10.96 billion adjusted versus 10.8 billion expected. Earnings per share around 68 cents versus 64 cents. So Warren Buffett, he's having a field day right now. And Warren Buffett's the one that is truly freaking me out a lot um, because he's primarily saying that they're trying to build a portfolio that'll be the last one standing. He recently said that in that CNBC interview, and it really kind of put me on edge a little bit because I'm like, what is this guy looking for down the road? I mean, we're talking about a guy that's buying oil, owns things like Coca-Cola, really into things like railways and things, you know, that are almost monopolistic in in the way they control certain aspects of the economy, you know, just buying into Mitsubishi Corp and like these five commodity players that control most of the, the imports that come into Japan. And it's just kind of horrifying to think like, is that the way we should be building a portfolio right now with all this tech exploding, you know, this future capability, should we be more or less looking for companies that have these sustainable modes? And honestly, I don't think he's wrong. And I think it's because he doesn't know what the long term vision is going to be on a lot of companies. And I noticed that Shamath really brings this up in uh, in a recent podcast. And I just want to break down bits and pieces of this. I kind of find it on a TikTok here as well. But this is so horrifying that I, I can't even express to you how much this is going to change the way we have to deal with a capitalistic society. I mean, we're going to, if you ever watch Wally, my I was talking about this with my uncles over the weekend, and there's a, a, a piece of Wally where like human civilization is just lazy, fat people on chairs and stuff like that. And I mean, it's hard not to see that future coming, but just, just listen to this. So I think this is a really important week because it starts to show how fast the recursion is with AI. So in other technologies and in other breakthroughs, the recursive iterations took years, right? If you think about how long did we wait from iPhone 1 to iPhone 2, it was a year. Everything was measured in years, except now these incredibly innovative breakthroughs are being measured in days and weeks. It's not clear to me how you start a company anymore. I don't understand why you would have a 40 or 50 person company i think you can do that with three or four people and that has so let me just mention right now that i'm seeing the infliction of ai on real working people there's a guy this dude works for a gaming company and he's freaking out right now because he went to school paid for this high education design programming he gets this job at this really cool gaming company loves the environment and then out of nowhere the ceo comes in and says hey we got to use the software now. It's going to do a lot of the game design. I don't need you sitting there for five or six hours designing bottles and all these little silly parts of the game. The AI is going to do most of the workforce. You just need to implement it into the game, cutting the work hours basically in half. And this guy's creativity and all his education just immediately went down the toilet. And he is super depressed about this. And this is just one aspect. I mean, we are talking about every aspect of the economy. And we've talked about this with McDonald's, the fact that fast food, you know, those jobs are going to be taken away from um, automation and AI. But just take a listen. Huge implications then to the second actor in this play, which are the investors and venture capitalists that typically fund this stuff, because all of our capital allocation models were always around writing 10 and 15 and $20 million checks and $100 million checks and $500 million checks into these businesses that absorbed tons of money. But the reality is like you're looking at things like Midjourney and others that can scale to enormous size with very little capital, many of which can now be bootstrapped. So it takes really, really small amounts of money. And so I think that's a huge implication. So for me, me personally, I am looking at company formation being done in a totally different way. Yep. And our capital allocation model is totally wrong size. Look, I think the VC job is changing. Sure. I think company startups are changing. I had this meeting with Andre Carpathy. I talked about this on the pod. I challenged him. I said, listen, the real goal should be to go and disrupt existing businesses using these tools, cutting out all the sales and marketing and just delivering something. And I use the example of Stripe, disrupting Stripe by going to market with an equivalent product with one tenth the number of employees at one tenth yeah. the cost. What's incredible is that this auto GPT is the answer to that exact problem.
Why? Because now, if you are a young, industrious entrepreneur, if you look at any bloated organization that's building enterprise class software, you can string together a bunch of agents that will auto construct everything you need to build a much, much cheaper product. I don't think you understand how truly horrifying that is to most companies that currently exist on the planet and what this kind of just means in general. Now, long term, you know, I'm probably not going to be around long enough. I might see the infliction of this. So my investing journey will be just probably fine. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to see in my lifetime, but I think it's going to be relatively horrifying from a worker's experience, right? Because trying to get a job in this ever faster evolving environment, like at all your skills are becoming outdated almost as soon as you're getting them at this point. And like he's saying, it's not like this evolution where like computing's doubling every year or something like that. Like this stuff is happening in weeks. There's just a new innovation that's taking over another job. I mean, we're going to see this affect every industry, every sector. And you really need to, if you're a lot younger, look out for jobs that are going to have a higher moat to disruption when it comes to losing your income diverse to one of these machines, right? And again, what does this mean for a capitalistic society when, again, sitting down with my uncle having dinner the other day, we were talking about his generation had a higher living standard than mine because his st living standard, you'd go to get gas, someone would come out, they would pump their gas, check their tires, check their oils just for getting gas. And you're talking about people that could go out and get a regular job with uneducated, no education, go get a job and afford to buy a house and live the American dream just from putting work in and getting manual labor, whatever job that was out there because people there was demand for it, right? Now it's just like, bro, you ain't getting a job at McDonald's or somewhere and living any kind of American dream anymore. And even if you do have a, high, a higher education, you damn well better know that that higher education has value because I mean, even if it's a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, those jobs are going to inevitably be replaced by robotics and AI, um, which is a horrifying future to think about because it's like Elon Musk saying that, you know, we got to get to the point where we may potentially need universal basic income, but how does that function from a biological standpoint when capitalism kind of gives people fulfillment, like it was designed to provide fulfillment. People have feel good going out and providing and working and building something for society, but we don't have anything left to build for society because computers and robotics are taking over. What does that mean from a moral and fundamental standpoint? I don't know, but damn, there's going to be some hard questions to answer in the future. So let's wind it back a little bit, get out of this metaphorical realm of the implications of AI and future technologies and talk about what's happening this week with earnings. I mean, we're talking about Meta. We're talking about Apple, Microsoft's posting tomorrow. We got Amazon coming up and we're going to start to see how this inflicts in the macro recessionary environment with these mega tech companies. And I'm hoping, I'm praying because Apple obviously seeing a slowdown in Mac sales. They're introducing obviously, you know, higher APY they're getting into interest rates, trying to compete with the banks, all this stuff. So we're going to get to see the full scope of what these companies are doing in this environment. And I'm hoping they get impacted because I think these companies, they're going to be around for a long time. They're going to be the future companies that I think are still going to be here for the next 20 years. They have crazy modes. They're just going to get impacted to some degree. And I hope they do. I really hope they pull back because, again, I'd like to buy them when they get more into a favorable value. But I think if you're looking for value today, it's in the small cap sector. I mean, I was talking about this with some people because I do sponsors on this channel. You see it. It's mostly smaller mid cap companies. And that's where the deals are. That's where the price to earnings multiples make the most sense. That's where we're seeing crazy rallies right now. We're seeing a lot of these small cap companies grow by one or 200% this year. And again, I think if you're looking to buy individual companies, I would start there and then just again, pick some of your favorite companies like Tesla as they start to dip slowly, cost average and increase, put dollars aside to increase the amount you cost average as they drop. Um, but yeah, it's a weird, interesting market right now. And I'd love to know what you're doing and what you think in that comment section below.